Hello again. Our reading today is from Mark 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And from Luke 4, verses 16 through 21, this follows immediately after the part that I just read, but in Luke's gospel rather than Mark's gospel. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. May God bless this reading to our living and to our understanding. Several weeks ago, I started a sermon series about the meanings of several words, baptism, calling, following, believing, fellowship, and love. My question for today is, what does it mean to be a church? But I'd like to start with a brief review. Our English word calling is used to translate the Greek word kaleo, remember that word, and it means to call out to someone or invite, as Jesus called the first disciples. And our English word fellowship is used to translate the Greek word koinonia, which means a group of people who work together and invest together for a common purpose. Koinonia can also be used to refer to the participation of each person, the contribution given by each person, and of the relationship between the people within the fellowship. So it is also translated in the Bible as participation, contribution, and communion. But church is the translation of a different word. The English word church is used to translate the Greek word ecclesia. If you know a little Spanish, this will sound familiar. Ecclesia is derived from two other Greek words, the prefix ek or ex, which means out, as in exit, and kle. And kle is a shortened form of kaleo, which means to call or to invite. Combine these word fragments and you get the meaning to call out or called out. An ecclesia then is a group of people that are called out and called together for a common purpose. This is the word that is used to translate church more than a hundred times in Acts, the letters, and revelations. It is translated differently in a story in Acts 19, where it's used three times. In Acts 19, the Apostle Paul was preaching in Ephesus. And there was a silversmith in Ephesus named Demetrius. 
that made shrines for the Greek goddess Artemis, the goddess of wild animals, of the hunt, of chastity and childbirth, the daughter of Zeus and the twin sister of Apollo. That's who Artemis was. Demetrius called the people of Ephesus into the streets, declaring that Paul was saying that gods made with hands were not gods, which he was saying, and that this was bad for his business and that it dishonored Artemis. They could not find Paul, but they dragged friends of his out into the streets with the crowd. Other friends told Paul to stay hidden. He was in danger. Here in the reading I'm about to read for you, ecclesia is translated as assembly. Listen for the meanings of assembly, which is the same word that's used in other places in the Bible for church. The city was filled with confusion and people rushed to the theater, dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians who were Paul's traveling companions. Meanwhile, some were shouting one thing, some another, for the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. But when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, if there's anything further you want to know, it must be settled in the regular assembly. For we are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. When he had said this, he dismissed the assembly. Here, koinonia has two meanings, and neither of them is church. The assembly, the koinonia, is the angry crowd called into the streets. And the regular assembly is something like a town council or a town meeting. People officially called into the streets for an orderly meeting. This is the word that Luke, Paul, and other biblical writers use to indicate the church. The word koinonia is only used in two verses of the Gospels, both in Matthew. Jesus said, I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. That's in Matthew 16. Later, Jesus gave instructions for how to resolve disputes. If the member refuses to listen, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. But from the beginning of Acts and through the letters, koinonia is used to refer to the church more than a hundred times. So what does it mean to be the church? We are a fellowship, a group of people who participate together and invest together for a common purpose. But to be a church means something more. We are a group of people that are called out, called out from our ordinary lives, called by Jesus, called by God, called to follow, called to serve, called out and called together. We are people with a calling. And just as each individual can have a calling, together a church can have a calling. So what is our calling? What is it that God invites us to do? What is it that God calls us together to do? What is the mission and purpose of Hillcrest Church? Our bylaws define our purpose rather strongly yet imprecisely as follows. The object of the church is to bind together followers of Jesus Christ for the purpose of sharing in the worship of God and in making God's will dominant in the lives of all people, individually and collectively, especially as that will is set forth in the life, teachings, death, and living presence of Jesus Christ. When I arrived 10 years ago, Hillcrest had a three-word slogan, celebrate, worship, serve. 
This is a shortened form of a statement of purpose that very few of us have even seen in many years. Local churches will have much in common in their statements of purpose. Worship and service will be part of the calling of many local churches. But each church has its own particular callings. In the Catholic Church, they sometimes talk about the unique charism or gift of each local fellowship. Celebrate is not in every church's mission statement. It is something particular to Hillcrest. We celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. We celebrate blessings and we celebrate significant events with the flowers on the altar. Celebration is a part of our task and it's a part of our attitude. What else is a part of our particular gift, our unique calling to our slogan, celebrate, worship, serve? I would also add, grow in faith, love and care for each other, and seek positive change in the world. Or in other words, do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with our God. In the early days of Hillcrest, we clearly had a priority on building the church, not only as a place, but as a community, and making disciples. After about 1970, we settled into worship and serve. If we are to continue as a church, we need to reclaim the task of evangelism, sharing the good news, making disciples. This takes more work than finding people who are more like us or hoping they find us. That brings us to the scariest question. Are we called by God to continue as a church? First Christian made an honorable choice to conclude the ministry of their congregation. In a sense, that ministry now continues here. Does Hillcrest continue in this place that we love? Our greatest challenge at the moment is finding the people who can do the work. Our church council is small, and we struggle to find the time and energy to make the necessary decisions and do what needs to be done. The problem is not with the dedication or willingness of those who are here. It is a matter of age and ability, and of having a small fellowship in a large facility. Yet, we carry on. And if we continue in this place, in what ways are we called out of what we've been, called out of the ways which we've done things for the past 40 years, called out to be something new and different. In the past year, we have become a new fellowship, which we continue to solidify and help to take form. If we grow, if we invite and welcome the people that are needed for this fellowship to continue, we will change and become something new. We will be called out of our present and into a new future. I would like to say a few words about why I sincerely hope that we will conclude that God is calling us to continue. We sincerely care about each other and have a connection with each other that could not be easily broken. We are strengthened in our faith and supported in our lives by our church. We disagree sometimes but generally we like being together. We have a form of worship which is faithful, sincere, thoughtful, and caring. Our music is not limited to just hymns, but it is still geared to the generation that is most represented here. Our worship is traditional in form, yet creative in content. We care about our neighbors in the community and in the world around us. We are small, but we do what we can to serve. It is a part of who we are. We seek to make a difference in the world. 
We welcome diversity of thought. We try to be a bridge in a period of history that has been building walls. This is not easy, but we believe that it is vitally important. And it may be attractive to some part of our community. We would like to do more to welcome a wider range of people in terms of culture, race, and orientation. We encourage each other to work for justice and for the well-being of all people, to care for the local and global environments. At the same time, we recognize and respect differences in our ideas of how this is best done. We have a facility that may seem to be a burden, but which is also a great gift to us from our earlier members and a great opportunity for present and future ministry. Part of our present ministry consists of sharing this facility. An important part of our gift and calling as a church is our approach to faith. We read the Bible with attention to historical context trying to understand what the words meant to those who wrote them and to those who first read them. We seek to understand what these words mean to us today, holding on to some humility and knowing that our understanding may be somewhat different than what was intended in the beginning. We resist the current tendency to say that all truth is relative and that something is true just because we feel it is true. We respect the insights of science and modern culture. We see that ancient cultures had their own limitations and injustices and believe that Christ's teachings on the centrality of love sometimes require setting aside old rules. But we also test the conclusions of science and modern culture against the standards we find in faith and love and justice. We still express our faith in terms of the Trinity, God as one in three persons. God is like a loving parent, the creator, the giver of life, the source of basic laws and moral teachings, the one true judge, and the source of grace. God is made known to us in Jesus Christ, teacher, and healer, in whose death and resurrection we find hope. And God as Spirit is at work in each of us, among us, in the world, guiding us and equipping us with the gifts of the Spirit. For many of us, our faith takes some translation from traditional understandings for us to grasp it and express it in terms of our modern understandings and experiences. But we still understand ourselves as followers of Jesus Christ in need of God's forgiveness and grace and open to being transformed by God's love. We find this promise of grace in God's word and at the communion table. Faith is trust. All of this is to say that churches like Hillcrest and First Christian are still very important and still have a place in the world. As people come out for a year or more in quarantine, they will be looking for places to connect and places to build on the ways that they have learned and grown in response to the experience places to heal from what they have seen and what has happened to them. For some people, we can be that place. The world needs churches like Hillcrest. We have something to offer. We are still a fellowship of people who are called by Christ, called out into a new future, called out into ministry and fellowship. May we find the clarity and wisdom to recognize God's call and the faith, hope, and love that will be required to follow. Amen. Please look for another video that will include communion and a final blessing.
But I'd like to close now with a reading from 1 Thessalonians 1, 1 through 5. In Greek, the sixth word of this reading is ecclesia, church. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that God has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. I offer the same thanks for you. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you soon.